the morning. God is still in the blessing business. The business is good. It's a great day. Amen. Celebrate today. It's not my birthday, not my anniversary. It's just a great day. Just to be able to get up and to wave my hands. That's all good. You know how bad athletic it is if you can just do this, you know, move your feet around a little bit. You don't know how real that is. Just try to visit the nurse. Well, this is just it is a day, great day, as like I said. You don't have to be celebrating anything. Just celebrate that you got up this morning. You still got your health and strength. Amen. Amen. Because God is still in the blessed business. Uh, have a call to worship. Be so kind. The word of God says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord. Right. Let's come for his presence with sin. Get into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercies are lasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Today we will be blessed. At a word. God has a word for you today. We're coming from our own social minister here, Reverend David James, a young man who loves the Lord and loves sharing the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to turn it over to Reverend James if he comes in his own way. Preach what it does, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy and righteous name. Thank you, Minister Chapman. And we certainly want to give honor to our pastor and to his wife and to the love that he has for us and for the people. Bless you at home. This is our first Sunday of the new month. And we are excited that God has brought us thus far along the way. And we will be serving communion in this virtual presentation. And we trust that you do have your communal cups and your wafers with you that you may take it at the appointed time. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord for his goodness. And I'm so happy to have the opportunity by the grace of our pastor to support him once again. I trust you at home are doing well and that you're staying safe. God is so good to each of us. If you would turn in your Bibles, we would just like to share a point of emphasis with you. Turn to the Old Testament, <laughs> the book of Micah. And you will find that towards the rear of the Old Testament between uh, that's between Nahum and Nahum and we ask that you would just use your index we all haven't been able to find it so fast in our in our time mm -hmm. so you just uh, you just you just go ahead and, and, and go to that and the Lord will help you Micah we will ask you to go to the seventh chapter and the 18th and passage, 18th and 19th passage of scripture. Emphasis scriptures along with that will be Ephesians 2 and 4, supporting scripture, and 1 John 1, 9. God is so good to us. And here's what it just says as I read from the King James translation, that's the seventh chapter. Micah and the 18th passage of scripture. Who is a God like unto thee that pardon iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant, remnant of, the, of, the, of his inheritance? He remains not for the anger forever because he delight in mercy. He will turn again, and he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thus will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. What a great God we have. What a great love that we have. He has for us. If I could just use for a theme for that, and a thought between that closing part of that chapter, it's trusting in the mercy of a forgiving God. And if you want to support that, you can just say, 
God's grace and mercy. For he is a merciful God and his grace abound. Our statement of emphasis is his mercy is an aspect of his divine love that shows compassion. And to help those that are broken, fallen, and have backslid, and who are miserable. And when you fall away from the Lord, you are in a miserable condition, my friends. I tell you now, there's nothing like God's mercy and His grace upon us. And just as grace is the aspect of His love, is an aspect of love that moves Him to forgive the guilty. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, let's do something real quick here. Micah here, Hebrew history. In the days of Micah, the social and religious condition of Judah and her sister nation, Israel, was deplorable. All through the country, evil prevailed. Idolatry was rampant. The wealthy took the advantage of the poor. Lord have mercy. Judges openly asked for bribes without the smallest sense of shame. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Just going on worldly and wicked. Unbelief. What lies underneath that? It was the root of that was the unbelief in God and the falling away and the backsliding from God's word. God appealed to Israel and Judah through the prophet Micah on the subject and the condition of their conduct. And let me tell you, sin will put you into a bad conduct way. Amen. You must stay with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You must be obedient to what he has asked us to do. He convinces them, Micah convinces them, that their sin was in deep and was grievous unto the Lord. Their sins would not be without judgment. Mm -hmm. God will judge sin. Micah watched as the Assyrians grew in the strength and marched their armies throughout the ancient world. It was clear to him that he saw that, that this pagan nation, Syrian pagan nation, would serve as an instrument of God's judgment unless Judah and Israel return back to God. Yes, sir. You must come back to the Lord. They had fallen away. Mm -hmm. But here, the prophet gives a faithful acknowledgement in that seventh chapter, in those last two passages. He gives a faithful acknowledgement of God's mercy. Mm -hmm. And he expresses confidence in God's promise to forgive and bless his people. God bless Israel. They messed up so much. Every time that God bless them, they seem to act up, oh, we're going to do all right, and they turn around and go the opposite direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right, Reverend. Hebrews 8 and 12 says, as a support of Scripture, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Listen to what he says. Hebrews 8 and 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Why? Because he delights in mercy. Mm -hmm. And the salvation, he delights in mercy, and the salvation of sinners is what he has pleased, is what pleases him, and not the death and damnation. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. In today's time, there is rampant so much debauchery going on. Hmm. We are pressed on every hand. Well. Seems like there are many are saying, I'm hemmed up, I can't get out. You may be hemmed up, but I'm gonna tell you, don't count the Lord out. Well, 
He is able to keep his church. Who is like him, Michael said? Who is like God that is able to do this great wonder and this great forgiveness? Single point. There are countless testimonies of those who refuse to believe that he or she can't be forgiven of their sins. Let me make that statement again. There are countless testimonies of those who refuse to believe that he or she cannot be forgiven of their sins. They say, God wouldn't want to forgive someone like me. I need to tell you, oh yes he will. They say, I have missed the mark so many times. And Lord, we all do come short. Amen. If they would only realize the wondrous, wonderful grace of God, that unmerited favor that he pours out, he is saying, and you know what he's saying? That he can do that? He is saying, repent. As he was saying to those back in as Micah prophesied and spoke to the people, you need to come back to God. Yes, Many of us seem like the enemy wants to draw us away during these times. But don't fall away. Mm -hmm. Repent, he said, and return back to me, what God says. Okay. Give me a chance to restore you. Many of us are broken, as I said in the open are fallen away and have backslidden and broken and been tempted by the unrighteousness of the enemy and that is Satan. Mm -hmm. His grace, God's grace is sufficient. Through, through his will and, his, and the believer's faith, he is able to bring comfort, healing, joy, peace, and restoration and also deliverance. Back during that dispensation, history teaches us today, God never said, I won't keep you, but I'll love you, and I'll forgive you if you just come back to me. Don't stray away from me. Don't go away from me. When you're conscious, the sin takes place and causes you to recognize the stain of disobedience, meaning a conviction. Don't ignore it. It is time to turn away from it. Come to God to let him know that he is an able God. Micah says, again, let us go through that verse. Who is a God like unto thee? Who is like God? There is none other. You can get all the presidents and all the senators and all the leaders that you want. But there's none that compare to God. Yes, sir. That pardon iniquity, that gives forgiveness of sin, that passes by the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. God always have a remnant. Mm -hmm. Those faithful who will stand strong. But he said, I don't want you to give up. Mm -hmm. I want you to hold fast. He retaineth, not his anger. Forever. He doesn't hold back his anger, but he does in a way to say, I could wipe you out. I could cause hat to come upon you. But because I delight in mercy, I shall save you. I shall bless you. Turn away from those things that displease God. Mm -hmm. Turn away from sin. Again, I say, confess your sins to God. Ask for forgiveness. All sin, what is it? It is naked and open before him. You cannot hide from God. Amen. You cannot scoot away. Don't think that it's not seen. Maybe the neighbor, maybe somebody else close may not see you, but the Lord sees us. Yes, it is offensive to him when that sin is done. And sin is an abomination in his sight. But confess sin. Sin is to be forgiven. But unconfessed sin will not be. That's right. Amen. You must confess. Mm -hmm. 
Don't think you can skip along and say, Lord, okay, you brought me out. And I'm still hooked up on the taste of the world. I can do it. The Lord says, no, don't make a mockery of my grace. Please don't do that to him. He loves us. It says, therefore, let a man examine himself or herself. Ecclesiastes 7 and 20 said, For there is not a man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Okay. What did he say? It's saying, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Sin has its judgment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Romans 6 and 23 said, For the wages of sin is what everybody at your home is what? Death. But what? The gift of God is what? Eternal life. Through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. Back then, Mike was saying, My people, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. If you keep on acting up, God's going to pour it on you, and you will find yourself in captivity. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us, that 19th passion. God is a compassionate God, church. He's compassionate on all of us. We need to show compassion. We need to show forgiveness. You can't go on and say, well, God, forgive me, but I can't forgive you. You hurt me. You did me wrong. Lord, have mercy. Forgive others. Forgive one another. And let me go one step further. You need to also, when you convince, you need to forgive yourself. A lot of things that you're carrying around because you haven't let go. You got to release it. Give it to God and say, Lord, I give it to you. You're able to lift me. You're able to keep me and you're able to heal me. Ephesians 2 and 4 say, but God who is rich in what? Mercy. For his great love, for with he what? Loved us. He loved us first. God has a divine love. And he wants us to have confidence in his promise in his forgiveness. That's what Micah had. He had confidence that I know that God is able to forgive me. I trust in God. And I trust that he will, he will and he has kept his promise. And that's true. When God paid the price. That justification. Ephesians 1 and 4. We didn't choose God. He chose us that we should be holy and without blame before him in L-O-V-E, everybody, love. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son. Would you give yours? Lord, have mercy. Just as ever should believe in him, should what? Not perish. But what have, or what have everlasting life. And in that justification, as if the slate is cleaned. And that justification means as if we had never sinned. Romans 4 and 25, who has delivered us for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. That is Romans 4 and 25. Read it. It's there. He wipes the slate clean. And he wants to wipe it clean with you. Mm -hmm. But you got to come to him, family. Yes, sir. You got to come to him, brother. You got to come to him, sister. Mm -hmm. You got to come to him, son. You got to come to him, daughter. When you become of the age and the awareness of your faults, you need to give it to the Lord. Yes, and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, a wretch, I'm done. Christ paid the price for the sins of man. 
His broken body and precious blood shed on Calvary was for the redeeming blood of sacrifice for all mankind. Is. Yes, sir. Not just for the preacher, not just for the teacher, not just for those that assemble in this place of worship or in your home place, but for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Even them that stand and sit high and do all manner of things, God has said, I did it for you. Mm -hmm. But you got to come to me. Mm -hmm. You got to give it over to me. We were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 and 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Mm -hmm. Yes, church. We are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. And as that, this table that is set before you at home, and that is set before us right now, he is saying to you, as often as you do this, in remembrance of me, I want you to know that I did it for you. Yes, sir. Don't take my body, don't take my blood and make a mockery of it. Mm -hmm. But remember, God so loved us so much. I hope this thought, this one point, translates and emulates into your hearts and into your minds that God loves us and he wants nobody to perish. He will perform the 20th passage in that 7th chapter of Micah, Micah in the 20th. Thou will form the truth to Jacob and their mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto the fathers from the day of the old. He didn't forget them back there, and he's not going to forget us today. Mm -hmm. Micah, Micah brought through it, and he said, as you look through, down to the 42 generation, and he even said that he saw Jesus Christ coming out of Bethlehem. There shall be one that shall come. Bless your hearts. Mm -hmm. So when we come to the Lord this day. Let us be obedient to this. God's mercy, let us trust in it. And be obedient to the things he's asked us to do. Yeah. In this short point of thought, be merciful, be forgiving, trust in the Lord, for he is a forgiving God. Mm -hmm. Let us not eat nor drink of our own damnation. Go to him in repentance. May the Lord bless you, and may he keep you as my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Jack. Bless us. Good word, good word. As we prepare to partake in our communion service, let us bow. Father God, we humbly come and acknowledge you, our God, and besides you, there is none other. Father, we pray that you would bless this particular ordinance that we're about to partake of. That we do this in remembrance of what you did for us, and you're still doing things for us, so we are yes, very sir. thankful to you, Father. Father, pray that we not, may not eat or drink of our own damnation, mm -hmm. but we do this so that you still get glory, because you're still worthy of all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, for sake we pray. Sinners that are saved by grace, we all are. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to partake. That's the Lord. Your grace and
God for his many blessings. And yes, sir. Even in the midst of all of the pandemic, we know God is good. Yes, sir. But we'd like to thank all of those that are continuing to pay their tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone that is on the fence, we ask them to move towards giving God what he said that it is our responsibility. September is a special month for us, and although we're not able to commune together, it is also our pastor's and wife's 54th anniversary. We will not have a program, but we'd ask you to think about all the good things that the pastor and wife has done to us during this period of time. And making out your envelopes, remember them. Also, we have been donating or giving away baskets of food, and we plan on continuing that. However, we don't have a definitive date when we're going to start back up again, but we will get that out to you as soon as possible. And we also know that this is a time that we need to think about our voting. And we want each and every member of this church anyone on this broadcast to remember it's our responsibility to go out and vote. Yes, sir. We're asking our ministry leaders that if there's someone within your ministry that is not able to physically go out and vote or need their ballots picked up and dropped off, please call one of your Amen. deacons, uh, liaisons, or call the church Amen. and provide that information to us. But I like to leave this one thing with you if you don't remember anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's said all the time. God is good. Yes, sir. And he's good all the time. Yes, sir. And before I sit down, thank you very much, Reverend James, for bless your message. Bless God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. What a blessing. What a blessing. Child is still in the mix. Getting it done. As we prepare for benediction. Now may grace our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet gift of the Holy Spirit, the triumph, blessing of the triumph God, rest in the power of us now, henceforth and forever. In the body of Christ, all set together. Amen. 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 Amen.